theater stop. What do they got? Like, we're getting attacked by the Russians right now? Yeah. Yeah. Michelle Wake's apartment in Ocean Beach or Ocean Beach or Point Loma? Point Loma Heights. What sounds cooler? Well, I think Point Loma Heights sounds fancier, but I do feel like we made it up to be fancy. What are you making for us today? Today I am making prosciutto, fresh herbs, fresh bread, and a bit of goat cheese and yogurt. And this is your favorite afternoon quick and easy snack? Yes. Or a little bit more intricate? It's a little bit more intricate, but it has everything in it that I want. All in one size, so I love it. I did bring a wine to pair with it. This is a white real hop. Cheers! Let's see how you do this. So I am plopping this zucchini into blanche and soften it up. I am prepping some vegetables to put on the bread. I have mighty banana multigrain fully sprouted bread, healthier for your digestion, which is important to me. This is a, a summertime dish. Yeah. This is summer on bread, yeah. it sounds like. When did you start cooking? I started cooking when I lived in Australia and there was a lot of Asian food available and Indian food and they had a lot of their ingredients in the normal grocery store. So uh, I would make a lot of different things there and then I, in New York when I worked at a high-end restaurant I learned a lot about uh, ingredients and fresh ingredients and started doing my own recipes. So Australia was the beginning? Australia was the beginning. To yeah. what your to your peak in culinary interest. Right. Yeah. And how were you then? If, if I can ask that, uh, I'm not asking yeah, how you fine. are now. <laughs> I was. Uh, it was. I think I was 19 to. I think I was. Not 19 to 21. 19 to 22. 19 to 21 years old. Yeah, something like that. Okay. And then when you moved to New York and you were working in the fine dining restaurants, um, what was the fine dining restaurant you worked at? Hmm, I don't know. It was a French restaurant. I would just say that, because I don't want to give them credit for my cooking. Ouch. <laughs> <laughs> but it was... Sorry, Daniel Bullock. <laughs> You're not getting any credit for this. No, I worked at Jean Georges, Jean and they, George. they were amazing, and it was a really good experience. But good and bad with anything. Did you so. ever get to eat there like on a day off? I did, and it was amazing. Super special. Yeah. Did they did they like comp you out and treat they you really well? They take such good care of you. That's the whole point. They, there's and a respect. Yes. They appreciate so much respect. the staff. Yes, it was whenever the staff we had time off to visit the restaurant, it was magical. Mm. Like you're working so hard and you get to just sit and let them Baby, so. And would they surprise you with food that you didn't even know was the kitchen could do, or did, like stuff would come out and be like, oh yeah, I always yeah. wanted to have this. Yeah, stuff would come out that was extra and things we wanted to try but hadn't been able to because you know we have our staff meal that's different. Obviously, they can't feed everybody their Michelin star employees' meals. So that was when we really got to bask in what the hard work and really enjoy try wine. That is like the funnest part of working in fine dining. Yeah. Run, let's go run, we already want to run. Let's go run, we the one to forget what can be. Not a lot. Okay, so I'll be toasting the pumpkin. So you just added avocado oil. Yeah, avocado oil. That one is supposed to be high heat oil. And extra virgin olive oil is mostly for salad. See, I'm one of those people that does things I go against the rules, like they say, 
don't use extra virgin olive oil or olive oil when sauteing like a steak or whatever because of that high heat we still start smoking i do it anyways yeah i think a lot of people are like me i think you can do that because i'm simple with my cooking i i just i don't want a lot of ingredients i love the idea of avocado oil and grape seed oil and all these kinds i just keep it basic in my kitchen but i like what you're doing using the different oils let's talk music michelle okay singer songwriter you started in new york performing no i started in michigan my hometown Michigan. Yeah, I was okay. doing it as a little girl. I would play in church, my little piano. I'd bring my keyboard on stage and play there, wherever. I would play in shopping malls where there was pianos for a long time, for two hours. Where there were pianos? Yeah. Like a piano store? Yeah, you know when kids go to the piano and they play and sometimes you don't want to hear it? I would play for two <laughs> hours. They were stuck with me. What the, were you become, did you become friends with the shop owners? They didn't mind. They liked it. They, they would clap it. and so cheer. You were good. Yeah, I was good. I would make it all up. You were just improvising while you were while you were on the piano. Yeah, and you know you hear music a lot when you're going around. So if you sit down and you're playing the piano all the time, you get used to where those sounds are. You don't. I took lessons too, but playing by ear, it kind of just happened naturally. That's so cool. And so, I mean, when you did all that, were you just kind of like doing it for fun or getting, hoping to be discovered by someone in the mall or you were just practicing? Well, all of it, really. I okay. thought that I had a crazy imagination, even as a grown up. It's dangerous. I have to like double check myself all the time. So as a kid, I was like, I'm going to be famous. I'm going to do this. I'm going to be a... a amazing piano player so I would try that's the way I behave that's how you have to be and I would record little cassette tapes and give them to family members that's so cool. but I didn't take it real you know when you get it as an adult you start to take it more serious it just because you're an adult at that point too you added your figs yeah to your to my pumpkin seeds okay <laughs> Take the bread out. Taking out the bread. Little baby. I have one knife for everything. That's perfect. So it's very wet inside, which is great. It will be delicious. It's hot and wet. It's wonderful. Okay. I don't want to throw you off with that hot, wet bread. <laughs> <laughs> it's beautiful. Okay. It's a beautifully hot and wet bread. <laughs> Is it wet or moist? I don't know that I don't know. But it's perfect. Okay. So then the prosciutto. What is the is the opposite of dry? <laughs> um the opposite of dry? <laughs> it's wet, right? So it is wet. We know dry bread is not a good thing. So <laughs> wet must be a good thing. Yes, and I think because it's sprouted, you know what? That's as far as my knowledge goes. It's wet right now. It's sprouted. Yeah. This, this thing, you, uh, okay. I thought there was some paranormal activity in your apartment. This, this drawer wanted to keep opening up. I always hope there's none of you that. Said, you said hot, wet bread, and then the drawer opened up on its own. They like. I got all excited. Oh. It's like, did someone say hot, wet bread? Okay, this is kind of the fun part because everything is happening and you get to do whatever you want with it. Salty cured meat on hot wet bread. Okay. Now do you say prosciutto or prosciutto? I say pro I say prosciutto, but there are a lot of letters in there that are just getting left out, you know? Like I hear Italians, people say, or Italians will say sometimes, like, 
I'll have the prosciutto. And I go, oh, oh really? that's how you say it. And then I'll, I'll be at a restaurant, I'll have the prosciutto. And then people go, no, it's prosciutto. Oh, the police are here. Police are here. Oh, no. There was a report it was hot, wet bread in the neighborhood. I have to add avocado because we're on the West Coast. This is a feast. Yeah, it's a feast. It's like a deconstructed um, hot, wet bread sandwich. But we have steak knives, so. I know. I'm going to keep my joke to a minimum with that steak knife in your hand. <laughs> Just a few chives because this would get weird if there were too many chives. Like, very weird. Beautiful. How much inspiration in your cooking came from places like Jean George? Jean George? Jean George. Jean George. Jean George. Jean George. Well, you know him as long as I have, you call him Jean George. <laughs> That's okay. Yeah, I couldn't say it until I forgot that I couldn't say it. And then all of a sudden, surprise, it just happens. So don't worry, you'll get it. Um, how much of my inspiration was from there? That's where I learned that you need, that it's nice to have a bit of everything that your palate wants. Okay. Some acidity, some uh, crunch, umami, sweet, salty, you put it all into one thing and integrate it in the right way and you can't go wrong, everybody's happy. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So, yeah. Contrast, hot, yeah. cold, yeah. textures. This is white balsamic vinegar. Okay. And this is just black pepper. Black pepper, some white balsamic vinegar, I love. And this is a goat cheese yogurt and it tastes like goat cheese but yogurt at the same time and it's like heaven I don't understand I'm just gonna put it there and then you can just dig into it okay. yeah this and is how you serve at a party right yeah yeah but it might get difficult with many people yes. peeling away very pretty Good. and a little bit of lemon juice on this Okay, thank you. thank you. Can't wait to try this and see if it pairs with our the wine. We got steak knives. We need the steak knives, trust me. The bread, you can even, if you have to tear it with your hands or whatever, you do what you need to do. Oh, okay, so I'm making a plate. You kind of make a plate. See, I would make a plate for each of us, but maybe we just do it ourselves. I can't wait to try the goat cheese too. I'm gonna. Oh, the goat yogurt. Mm hmm. I feel like I'm doing my body some good. You are. By eating this. Oh my gosh, but the prosciutto. This is what everyone should eat on a Monday after a, a weekend of whatever mm. steaks and yeah. alcohol. I do like that cheese. Yeah, I mean, isn't it so good? Cheese or yogurt? What am I saying? It is. It's goat yogurt, but it tastes like cheese. See, I got it from my granola. Mm -hmm. And I realized when I was eating my granola that I was having bliss, a moment of bliss. And I realized it was harmless cheese for my body. And I loved it. Liam, can you get a shudo, fig, and squash on this, on this bite right here? Microgreens. The saltiness of the prosciutto gives it that savory flavor. Now I want to try it the wine. Yeah. 
That works good. That works good. It's like yeah. nice little balance of the prosciutto. Really, the prosciutto in this is the thing, the saltiness. Everything else is pretty mild. When I first tasted it, it was effervescent. You know how you have a little bit of crisp? Yeah, yeah. But there is no bubble, there's no air. But it still has weight to it. Mm -hmm. So there's weight, but it's also enough acidity. It's really comfortable. So how would you describe your music? My music, um, well, it's soulful, but I was classically trained growing up. I found the value in learning the theory and getting the practice down and then coming back to the creative side of it when you have to let it all go and just be in the moment and feel it. I've been inspired by jazz, classical music, um, rap music. Music in general inspires me and sometimes even if it's a binaural note. And then when I go to a gig, what I'm doing actually is reading the room and listening to the sounds in the room and deciding on in the moment what fits best. And then automatically the practice, the theory, those things are there as support and help. Um, so my gigs, I play covers, I play originals, I utilize classical piano and you can call it jazz because I am making it up on the fly. Let's see what happens. That's what do you have a set list, or maybe you have a set list, but you might improvise depending on the crowd and like what the vibe is? Exactly, yeah. So I you just you could just totally deviate from that set list. Right. And do yeah. what feels right. Yeah, exactly. And they, I'll play the same song a different way in a different environment. That's cool. That's what it means. I don't think, I don't know many musicians that do that. Maybe it's a little, maybe a little more flexibility if you're playing solo. But you do have like a backup band. Like you, when you played in New York, yeah. you had a backup band as well. You yeah. Had a drummer, guitar. Yeah, I did, and I used to sing in bands and things. But um, it is amazing working with those people because you do end up modifying how you play to fit them, anyways. And then sometimes the crowd can you kind of trump the environment and you become the environment when you have more people on stage with you but for me i do work solo right now so i accommodate the environment but with a band you can work with them and create something you're looking to collaborate violinist drummer i don't know bassist yeah okay michelle thank you so much for being on the show anything you'd like to plug my website is there for any bookings. I have I'm, I have music on all the media platforms, so you can find ways to reach out. Cheers. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Thank you.